What a mess, what a mess, what a mess in my shop. I've got tools and parts and paint every place. Well, it's alive, had it running. It runs really well, it's nice and quiet. I've got a cooling fan geared up. I still got, the last thing I have to do is wiring. And that's my favorite part of the whole job besides the welding, I love welding. So I made some brackets and welded them to this two inch square tube. These are uh, Volkswagen Mark III transmission mounts. I've got three of them, I've got one in the front where it would be in the, in a golf, let's say. I've got one back here and I've got one under the transmission over here, right there. I've got a European Vanagon muffler, which is about three feet long, so it makes it nice and quiet. At the factory airbox. This is a 1.6 liter straight diesel or normally aspirated diesel, which means it has no turbocharger. I had the transmission taken apart and the differential locked up. That's a, a straighter run as I can make with a, a brand new Chinese axle, only because the German one wasn't available and it'll be just fine. It never has to steer. It only has to move this shaft. So this shaft was a series of, um, a friend of mine's a machinist and we started out with a with a hub and a steady bearing. This is an inch and a half steady bearing and there's a hub in there that's uh, the front hub from a Golf that this spline fits into. And then we took a brake rotor and cut it down, then made a sleeve and welded it to that, and then made a sleeve and welded it to that, and then made a, cut the shaft off here, which was a dis, uh, quick coupling um, from Princess Auto. So we cut it off and made a perfect tap-in fit. So everything has about a, oh, well, just a tiny little bit of, of, well, actually almost no clearance. It's, everything's a press fit. So I put everything together in my hydraulic press and then welded it up. It's got a little bit of give in that pillow block, which is what I like to see. So nothing's gonna be held solid and shake the guts out of everything here. So the next step for me is to get four jacks. I wanna put a jack right here same place on the other side, in that corner, and that corner over there, so I can raise this up. This has to be about three feet off of the ground to make this output shaft level with the input shaft of my processor. So, new starter, new alternator, new head gasket, new clutch disc, the pressure plate and flywheel look great. Uh, a mixed match of used cooling system parts from uh, Volkswagen Fox, Volkswagen Vanagon, Volkswagen Golf. Um, I, it's an a air-conditioned radiator for a, a Fox. Only thing I'm not too happy with is the way the hose goes to the front of the radiator, but it seems to cool just fine. I had it up and running and at about 85 degrees Celsius, I turned the fan on, just, just bridged it to the battery, and it cooled it off to 77 in all about 30 seconds or so. So I'm not sure yet if I'm going to put that fan on its own switch. So it has a, a switch in the radiator, which comes But there's off. a really good chance that I'll forget to turn that fan on. I know myself a little bit too well. Plus, I'm not the only one that's going to be operating this. My wife is going to be operating this, and I just want her to think about making wood. I don't want to have to think her to think about whether she left the fan on or needs to turn it on or whatever. You know what I mean? So anyway, that's about that. I also have to gear up a glow plug relay. I don't have a relay here that's powerful enough to run the glow plugs when they're cold. When they're hot, they're okay. Don't need them when they're hot too much, but they draw nine amps a piece, so four nines or 36, but when they're cold, they spike up to almost 70 amps. So all I have here is a 40 amp relay. What I'd really like to have is a, a Ford starter relay would be ideal just on a push button that would just, all the push button does is turn the relay on and that connects the battery to the glow plugs. Um, and that will, that would work great. And I, I'm surprised I don't have a glow plug relay here for a diesel of some sort. I thought it would for sure. And all of my conglomeration of Volkswagen bits I've been collecting over all these years, I don't own a random glow plug relay that would carry that current. It seems odd to me, but anyway. Well, I got bad news today. The uh, bridge that's on our road, they've been doing some construction on it, and a friend of mine called me up. He said, I hope you're not planning to get any wood hauled in or out because one of the main beams let go. So that means that only thing, only thing that can go through there is a passenger car right now. I hope nobody has a fire. The garbage didn't even, couldn't even go today. The garbage truck today was garbage day. Um, 
today is always the day that I'm a somebody because somebody always has to put the garbage up. <laughs> anyway, this box behind me, it's a total random thought. That's an air conditioning A coil that my friend Chad put in for me about, uh, he put that in, let me think, must be 15 years ago, I would say. So this shop has got proper air conditioning. I've got a great big behemoth uh, compressor outside and a condenser and the evaporators inside. And I, it's uh, right now it's about 39 degrees with the Humidex outside. And in here, it's, you can almost see your breath. I could hang meat in here, I think, if I needed to. So, so the exhaust is done, cooling system's done, air intake's done, frame is done, uh, axle is done, transmission's done. Uh, I might time the pump yet, I'm not sure. It starts and runs great. I'll probably just run it and see what happens. Uh, these early golfs, I, I like. I, I know them pretty well. I worked, did a lot of work on them, so I timed the injection pump to 0.85 of a millimeter, just a little bit early on them, just so that, uh, you know, they start a little nice. It doesn't have to break any land speed records, that's for sure. But the oak foot shaft was a big thing. My machinist friend did that for me today. And it's probably run about a half an hour, and I'm thrilled with the way it works. It doesn't smoke, it's quiet, so, and I don't have any leaks, which is what I'm, I think, most happy about, <laughs> that uh, I thought for sure there'd be something that overlooked, but so far, so good. And what else can I say about it? Got to gear up a charging system too, so getting close. I would say tomorrow this time, I'll put this on something, forks in my tractor, build a box for it, see if I can run the processor right where it sits to make sure it has enough RPM. Oh, I also have a cadence counter, that's what it's called. It's got an hour meter in it and a, a little magnetic pickup, it's called a Hall effect switch. So when the magnet passes past this little sensor, it says one, pass again, two, so on. So, and it counts my revolutions. So there has to be a way that I can know for sure that I'm, uh, turning that shaft at 400 to 430 RPM because that's what my machine, my new machine requires. Most rear mounted PTO tractors are 540. So my chipper runs 540, my snowblower runs 540. Mid mounted PTO run, uh, I think it's 2100. You can run them at pretty fast. Just the way the gear ratios work. Doesn't mean the engine's running any faster. But this here, in theory, somewhere around 22 or 2300 RPM, which where the engine will be in its sweet spot, will give me 430 RPM in third gear. But I'm gonna put that cadence counter on it. I have to epoxy a magnet somewhere. <laughs> Not sure where that's gonna be yet. I'll, uh, I'll find a happy spot for that on uh, axle flange or CV joint or somewhere. Somewhere that my little sensor can reach in. It's got a little threaded, oh, it's quite adjustable. It's probably two inches of thread on it, something like that. So and I'll be able to reach in, just have a little air gap of a millimeter maybe. And every time that passes that, that'll count me a revolution. Plus every time that's spinning, it's counting down time. So I get a, a really good idea that in a hundred hours, I can change the oil and filter in this thing. So anyway, that's enough of that for today. This is day four of my firewood processor upgrade. This is a complete homemade PTO power pack. So I can run a generator off of this, water pump, my chipper shredder. Of course, the firewood processor is what it's intended for, but whatever will take a six spline shaft, this will run it. 53 horsepower, this will be uh, a good addition to anybody's uh, homestead, including mine. Thanks for watching, everybody.